let's talk about boxing. Throughout cinema history, the sport has been the focus of some of the most popular, acclaimed and influential films. There is something about two people punching each other in the face that touches audiences' primal instincts, whilst also offering a chance to see characters fight against prejudice and their flaws. And whilst there are many great boxing films which are worth talking about, two have won the Oscar for Best Picture, Rocky and Million Dollar Baby, with each using the sport to offer different perspectives of the world, particularly when it comes to the idea of the American dream. Rocky, do you believe that America is the land of opportunity? Rocky is a celebration of America as the land of opportunity. It is the ultimate underdog story, showing the American dream in its purest and most inspirational form. On the other hand, Million Dollar Baby has a much more depressing outlook. It shows an America going through a period of dark reflection, where opportunity felt limited. It shows the American dream as something that is unachievable, evoking feelings of failure and hopelessness. So how do these two films with such contrasting tones use the same sport to push forward their ideas, and why is boxing such a great genre for making films about the American dream? In this video, I'll try to give the answers to these questions and more. Hi, I'm Jacob, and you're watching 1728 Film. Spoilers ahead. Before I begin, there are two things you should know about this video. Number one, I am going to talk about the controversial ending of Million Dollar Baby. I'm aware that it's a subject matter that upsets people, so this is just to say that I'm not looking to take a side, just express some thoughts. Secondly, this video will focus only on the events seen in the first Rocky film. The depiction of the American Dream changes pretty drastically throughout the franchise, but as this series is about Best Picture winners, I'm only taking the first film into account. So, the idea that a boxing match can stop the Cold War is sadly not going to be mentioned. Okay, so let's begin. The American Dream, in its simplest form, says that if you work hard enough, you will eventually succeed. It states that all people are born equal, and through work ethic alone, anyone can craft success and happiness which is usually signified by money and fame. It is the dream of an individual. You are in control of your own destiny. If you succeed, it's because you did something right, and if you fail, it's because you did something wrong. In storytelling, it's an idea that's been explored, celebrated, and critiqued by many authors and filmmakers. Dreaming of a better situation for ourselves is natural. Therefore, to watch a character with similar dreams to our own face struggles in their fight for success provides ample opportunity for storytellers to increase the stakes and create inspirational moments, tense drama, and emotional twists. Combining the individuality of the American dream with boxing is a natural fit. Boxing is the most individual of sports. When a boxer steps into the ring, only two things can happen. They will win, or they will lose. And either way, it's going to hurt. Filmmakers usually take this physical pain and intrinsically link it to the character's dreams, so that the audience watches a character who is fighting to not only beat their opponent, but to prove to themselves that they are capable of achieving their dream. In another Best Picture winning film, On the Waterfront, failed boxer Marlon Brando sums up the idea of most boxing films with the famous quote, I could have been a contender. I could have been somebody instead of a bum. This idea of wanting to be somebody is key to the success of most boxing films, with Rocky and Million Dollar Baby being no exception. In both of these films, the lead characters are set up as nobodies. The world of Rocky is solely inhabited by bums. Like a bum. You're a bum! You know that? You're a bum! He's a bum! Everybody I fight is a bum. This bum got to say that Everybody I'm calling you up, a okay. bum. Prove I was no bum. The bum from the dark. Get a jab, you bum. Guaranteed to end up a bum. I don't think you're a bum. Well, I'm at least half a bum, you know. And I don't raise you to go with this scumbum. That weren't just another bum from the neighborhood. Whilst in Million Dollar Baby, Maggie, played by Hilary Swank, is described to the audience in an early voiceover as trash. She grew up knowing one thing. She was trash. Both lead characters are trapped in worlds of poverty, and there is little opportunity to escape. In Million Dollar Baby, this lack of hope is shown not through to Maggie, but rather through all of the other characters who inhabit the gym. In particular, the film's narrator, Scrap, played by Morgan Freeman. Scrap is an old, half-blind black man with a gambling problem. A failed boxer who has had the fight beaten out of him. He is the antithesis of a typical Hollywood narrator except for the wonderful sound of his voice. I only ever met one man I wouldn't want to fight. 
The choice to set up the entire film from his perspective instantly sets the audience up for the hopeless tone that permeates the rest of the film. In Rocky, it is the helplessness of Rocky himself that sets up the theme of hopelessness, with a large focus on the character's loneliness. Through the early scenes, Stallone's title character is seen struggling to build meaningful relationships with anyone except his pet turtle. He complains consistently about the lack of opportunity in his life, with several moments dedicated to his bitterness about never being given a shot, something he blames on the fact that he is left-handed, or a southpaw in boxing terminology. Never got a chance though, because you're left-handed, huh? Well, that's absolutely true, you know? Being a southpaw is something Rocky has no control over, and he feels that this physical attribute, something no amount of hard work can change, has denied him the opportunity to succeed. Although, of course, there is a massive difference between being left-handed and being a woman. In Million Dollar Baby, Maggie is similarly denied opportunity because of her gender, something she has no control over. She is a woman who wants to succeed in a man's world, and because of this, everyone disrespects her, with Clint Eastwood's Frankie being the beacon of their sexist attitudes. You're wasting your time. I told you I don't train girls. The films differ, however, in terms of the characters' viewpoints on their poverty. As discussed, Rocky has already given up any chance of success. His dream has already died. Whereas Maggie is still hopeful and will not let herself be denied a chance of winning. She defies prejudice, turning up at the gym unwanted and pushing herself as hard as she can in order to achieve her dream of being a boxer. This hard work eventually pays off as Frankie agrees to train her. However, the opportunity comes with a sacrifice. To succeed in boxing means to deny your natural instincts. To move left instead of right to step into pain. As the film states early on, Boxing is an unnatural act. In order to win at boxing, Maggie goes against her own body in the fight for her dreams. This denial of her physical self, whilst it leads to success in the ring and the earning of Frankie's respect, does not, however, fix Maggie's problems outside of boxing, as shown through the fractured relationship between Maggie and her mother. Maggie's mother is the physical and metaphorical opposite of Maggie. Whereas Maggie works hard to get into peak physical condition and make money, her mother is overweight and scrounging benefits. I can't live without my welfare. These differences in attitude and lifestyle create a barrier between the two that cannot be overcome. It is clear that Maggie's dream, aside from winning boxing matches, is to restore this relationship. However, all of Maggie's attempts to bridge this gap fail, epitomised by her mother's reaction when Maggie purchases her a house. The money to buy the house comes from Maggie's physical success, something her mother can't understand and thus rejects. Later in the film, it is shown that if no amount of Maggie's success can repair the emotional gap between mother and daughter, neither can failure. When Maggie loses control of her physical self, the one thing she has pinned all of her hopes on, her mother still denies her both sympathy and love, turning up at the hospital only to try and exploit Maggie's wealth. There is literally nothing that can restore this mother-daughter relationship, because simply by believing in the American dream, by working hard and trying to forge a better life for herself, Maggie has judged her mother's life as something bad, something to run away from. Million Dollar Baby makes it clear that no matter how hard Maggie works, no matter how much success she has, there are some things that cannot be changed. The American dream is there a waste of energy. Rocky also uses the physical body as a metaphor for the American dream, but in a very different way. Rocky's physique can be seen as the embodiment of the dream itself. As Rocky works hard to improve his boxing, all aspects of his life improve near simultaneously, including his self-belief and his relationships with others. At the start of the film, nobody wants anything to do with Rocky. Adrian won't laugh at his jokes. Mickey gives away his locker, and Paulie wants nothing to do with him. However, as soon as his fight against Creed is announced, they instantly change attitudes. Adrian goes on a date with him, Mickey starts to train him, and Paulie becomes his manager. In Rocky, it is shown that the only way to improve your life is to work hard, and Rocky's transformation from bum 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 to contender improves not just his own life, but also the lives of those around him. This hard work wins you respect and success message is epitomised in the iconic training montage. By having Rocky work hard and overcome difficulties in his quest, the audience is drawn in and wants Rocky to succeed. A genuine belief that he will not throw away his opportunity is fostered. The lyrics of Gonna Fly Now literally spell out what's happening. The 
use of the characters' physical bodies as metaphors for the American dream is just one way in which both films drive home their key themes. Another is through their endings, with both films effectively employing twist endings to subvert audience expectation. Rocky sets up the audience for its ending in the Go the Distance scene. So all I want to do is go to distance. In this scene, a depressed Rocky changes the milestone for what success is classed as. He literally tells Adrian and the audience that if he is able to last 15 rounds against Creed without getting knocked out, something no one has ever done before, then he will have proven to himself that he is no longer a bum. Bum! Bum! This speech proves to be exactly what happens. Rocky manages to survive everything Creed throws at him and goes the distance. In doing so, he proves the world wrong and gains respect just by being courageous. Even though he technically loses the fight, Rocky and the American Dream is the real winner. But to really understand the impact of the ending, we first need to step back and look at the production of Rocky. In particular, the parallels between the film, the boxing match that inspired it, and Sylvester Stallone in real life. Before writing and starring in Rocky, Stallone was an unknown actor who had appeared in minor roles in a handful of films, his only leading part being in the adult film Party at Kitty and Studs, later re-released as Italian Stallion in order to capitalise on Stallone's success. Stallone was dirt poor and struggling to survive. He was, like Rocky, a bum. bum. <laughs> Then, Stallone saw a fight that changed everything. Muhammad Ali versus Chuck Wepner. Ali was the heavyweight champion of the world, the greatest boxer of all time at the height of his power. Chuck Wepner was a relatively unknown bruiser. On paper, it was a foregone conclusion. Ali would win easily by knockout. But Wepner had other ideas. He surprised everyone by taking almost everything Ali threw at him. Taking punch after punch, Wepner survived round after round by pure courage, even controversially knocking Ali down. Entering the ring, Wepner was a nobody, but leaving it 15 rounds later, he was a hero. Inspired after watching this fight, Stallone wrote the first draft of Rocky and pitched it to some Hollywood studios, and they loved it. The film was destined to be a big budget tentpole release, with stars such as Burt Reynolds approached to play Rocky. Except Stallone said no. He turned down the money because he knew that if someone else played Rocky, he wouldn't be able to live with himself. Rocky was based on Stallone, and he was sure that he was the only person who could play the part as he imagined it. Stallone was granted his wish, and eventually got the funding to make Rocky on a lower budget, with himself playing the lead. And the rest is history. When Rocky was released, it touched a nerve that provided Americans with exactly what they wanted, particularly in their bicentennial year, something which the film embraces. The film is a celebration of the dreams and values of a 200-year-old nation, a film about an underdog overcoming odds with nothing more than hard work and self-belief, a reflection of how many Americans at the time saw the world and their own futures. The backstory of Stallone's journey mirroring the character he played allowed it to become a Hollywood fairy tale for the ages, with even the Academy Awards unable to resist its charms. The only problem is that in real life, the dream of Rocky is not realistic, because Chuck Wepner didn't go the distance. Wepner did last to the 15th round against Ali, but was knocked out just 19 seconds before the final bell. He was praised for his courage in taking Ali so far, but he did not cement his legendary status in the way Rocky would. Stallone altered the real life story, and instead of denying Rocky his dreams, gives the character everything. At the end of Rocky, Rocky wins both the girl and the dream career he always wanted, showing the audience that hard work alone can get you rewards. This ending is completely contrasted in Million Dollar Baby, which breaks away from audience expectation by having a final act that has nothing to do with boxing. Instead, it shows that working hard can mean nothing and that the American dream is not something that can be achieved. Up until Maggie steps into the ring for what will be her final fight, the film follows a fairly typical structure. Maggie has worked hard and finally earned her chance at winning a title. Going into this fight, the audience expects one of two things to happen. Either Maggie will win the title and her life will be great, or she will lose valiantly and strive for further improvement. No one expects that a dirty punch combined with a poorly placed stool will take everything away from Maggie. In just a few seconds, Maggie goes from having achieved everything she worked so hard to accomplish to the edges of death, spending the rest of the film paralysed in a hospital. When some people watch Million Dollar Baby, they see the ending and think that it simply means disability is a death sentence, that to be paralysed is to be the same as a sick dog and you need to be put out of your misery. And whilst I can see how this opinion is valid and upsetting to people, particularly those who live with disabilities, I do think it is a little bit too literal. 
As I've discussed, Maggie's body is a metaphorical representation of the American dream. She works hard for success, denying her body in her quest, but the hard work cannot take her far enough. Just like Scrap failed before her, she is destined to fail. The American dream is not something anyone has control over. Sure, some people will get success, but for most, it's something that is unattainable, and in Maggie's case, will lead to her death. Million Dollar Baby does, however, offer a solution to the American dream that isn't dying. A solution which, in a way, is even more depressing. This solution? To give up and accept your circumstances, as shown through the choice of Scrap as narrator. Scrap's backstory is complex, and a lot of it is left unknown to the audience. But what is made clear is that there are several parallels between him and Maggie. Scrap once dreamed of fighting his way to success. Like Maggie, he put his physical body on the line in the hopes of making fame and fortune. And, just as Maggie is fated to do, he pushed himself too hard and sacrificed his sight. Becoming blind in one eye put Scrap in his place and forced him to give up on his dreams of great success. Instead, he created a status quo in the gym, a world where he is in control of every aspect, a world where he lets others dream, shown by his protection of danger and helping Maggie to begin her journey. It is only when Maggie's success begins to threaten his status quo that things change. Scrap's world is reliant on Frankie maintaining the gym as is, and therefore he attempts to move Maggie onto new management. He knows from his own experience that Maggie's dream will be her downfall, and he doesn't want it to crush his own world at the same time. And of course, Scrap is proven to be correct. His view that the American dream is something that only ever ends in disaster is vindicated. The ending of Million Dollar Baby is also particularly depressing when you consider that Maggie had no say in her downfall. She didn't lose her life and dream because she worked too hard or failed to win. Instead, everything was taken from her because of blind luck. As much as the punch which knocks Maggie down was cheating on the part of her opponent, the likelihood of her landing on the stool in the way she does can only be called a freak accident or bad luck. In Rocky, this element of luck is reversed. Rocky is only given the chance to fight Apollo Creed and thus undergo his transformation because of a series of fortunate events. The boxer, who was originally supposed to be fighting Creed, suffers an injury and, with no replacements willing to fight at such short notice, Creed is desperate. Luck leads him to see Rocky's Italian stallion moniker and realised the marketing potential. On any other day, or in any other year, he might have picked some other fighter, a right-handed fighter who he could beat more easily, perhaps. Without luck, Rocky would never have been given an opportunity. He could have worked just as hard as he did and never be given a chance. He would have just remained stuck, working as a lone shark goon and feeding his turtles. This element of luck can be seen to undercut the positivity of the film's core message and turn it into a story that is not about hard work and self-improvement, but about destiny. The American dream seen in Rocky is the belief in luck. It is the belief that at some point in your life, an opportunity will present itself to you. And when it does, you just have to be ready to grab it. To summarise then, it is clear that the American dream is a complex subject and that boxing films are a great way to explore the issues it presents. And whilst Rocky and Million Dollar Baby present polarising views on the dream, there is no denying that they are both effective works of art. Ultimately, I suppose, it is up to an individual to decide whether they would rather empathise with Maggie's struggle or believe in Rocky's success. Or, if you're like me, you can love and understand both films for different reasons. Thanks for watching.